Oh, I know why I brought up my diabetic brother. I understand why. God. Because uh, that makes him in, in like the dangerous COVID territory. He had COVID recently. And he found out through his doctor about an antibody treatment for people who are high risk of, of getting severe COVID. And I told him, hey, I got COVID. And my brother goes, oh, <clears throat> I did this antibody treatment at our doctor and I was good. It took care of COVID in like two days. Uh, why isn't, why aren't we watching your brother? He sounds really impressive. Man, shut up. So I called the doctor and they're like, hey, are you high risk? And I shit you not. I went, I'm really fat and have asthma. And the, the, the nurse laughed and she's like, okay, the doctor will call you back to see if uh, we're going to schedule for it. I go right back to sleep. I get a call. I think it was same day. And they're like, you've qualified. You can come in tomorrow to get your antibody treatment. I was like, oh shit. So I, uh, I next day I get my car on death's door. Not really. I just got driving with any flu or COVID is just, I don't need It's autopilot It's AIDS. I go to this hospital and I got an IV thing injection. And I need to tell you guys a story that you're not going to believe because it's, it's hard to believe. And I wanted a photo with her to prove she was even real. Um, but uh, I got too nervous to ask her for a photo because it was a professional setting. I did feel weird. Scripted and coming. I want you to tell me where I made this up from then. Uh, Doki Doki Desu. Thank you for the 20 subs. But is your brother hot? The hottest. So I go in and I'm dealing with like the... the the low end nurses, I don't even know what you'd call them. They, they, they didn't do anything, but they set up the room. Every woman I interacted with, I only interacted with women. All of them are black. This doesn't matter yet. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they're all very, very kind to me. I was ill and not having a good time and not ready to have a good conversation. I just didn't feel uh, great. So I go into the room and uh, she's like, okay, My the, grandmother the nurse. and grandfather died due to COVID. <laughs> Someone in chat said, rip bozo. Hey man, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. I think that's a, that's a sad thing. And I think that uh, you should Didn't make ask. sure to, okay. Rip bozo. <laughs> you know, God bless you. And I hope you're doing okay. Cause, cause grandpa's not. All right. So I'm kidding. Um, hey, yo, bro. How's your penis look? I think I left it at the hospital. So I go in, I'm sitting there waiting and I, I'm just sweat. I'm like COVID sweating, just in a chair, like not comfortable, sick as hell. Like I need this over with and knock on the door and in walks this Southern, I, I this large Southern black doing woman, fine, but they are dead. Okay. In walks this, can someone take this guy's fucking TTS? Not yeehaw brother. Like, like, like a, like a Ooh, child. <laughs> type you know what i'm saying she kept calling me baby and child and she's like oh i'm gonna take care I, and i'm i wouldn't do this voice unless it was real okay and i i asked her if i could tell my chat her name i've got and she you, said fam. yes but the problem is is you will be able to find her if i tell you her name like a like a big mama exactly and and <laughs> with peace and love uh i i really like this woman so she, oh she's like oh baby oh you look so sick oh i'm gonna take care of you and she's like get everything ready and i'm like oh i can't look at the needle she's like what you mean you got tattoos you're fine and she looks at this arm <clears throat> and where the vein is it's totally like blacked out she's like i can't work with that i gotta go to this one Doo -doo -doo, she's working and uh <laughs> we're talking so she has to give me the injection and then i have to wait there for about an hour so she can monitor me to see if i'm fine or having an allergic reaction Everything was fine, but we talked for a while, essentially. This music's getting intense. I'm going to pause it. And uh, we're just getting to know each other. She's trying to keep me calm and relaxed and everything. She's doing a really good job of it. And she tells me, she's like, I know I don't look it, but I'm actually 59. And I'm going to keep it a buck with you guys. I thought she was like 35. She was the definition of black does not crack. She, I, co I could not tell. And the reason she dropped her age was because at one point... I was telling her, like, I'm really nervous. Like, I don't feel well. I'm not on my game. So I'm, I'm kind of panicking a little bit. And she's like, she grabbed me and she said something to the extent of like, baby, I ain't going to let you die. She's like, I've seen a lot worse than this. I was in the Gulf War 
Okay. I was a nurse up there on the lines, taking care of people right there in that moment. She's like, I ain't going to let you die, baby. You're fine. And I was like, Gulf War. She's like, by the way, I'm 59. I know you're wondering. And I was like, holy shit. And instantly I'm like, dude, I'm good. If I stop breathing, she's going to jump on me and make it happen. Um, <clears throat> what a fucking hero. Yep. Oh, I talked to her. She was telling me all these fucking crazy stories. I did not push, but she was telling me, she's like, I seen some of the most horrible shit. Like, uh, cause I was saying like, uh, she, she was asking me how I am and, and I was telling her like, ah, oh, I'm here. So I'm not great. And she's like, honey, you're here. That's why you are great. She's like, I've seen situations where there is no here, right? You're, you're not, you're not doing well. There's nowhere to go. You're, you're dying right here. She's like, you're doing great. And I was like, damn, I'm going to share that with chat. Cause that shit, that shit made me feel so safe and thankful. I was like, damn, that like. I, I don't know. I don't want to trigger anybody, but she was, she told me some graphic stories. She was like, she's like, I've been in situations where I'm trying to calm someone down and I'm literally holding their leg. You know, she's like, you're doing fine. Like you got nothing to worry about. And I'm like, damn, we really out. We really do live in a society. Um, so she was awesome. And then we started talking about what I do for a living. And I'm like, Oh, I'm a YouTuber. And she's like, Oh, that's so great da, da, da. she's like my friends always tell me i should have done content creation blah 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 and here's where you're not gonna believe me <laughs> but she said you know what i wanted to be before i was a nurse but my dad would have let me my dad's from nigeria and she she was doing i'm not gonna do it but she was doing a nigerian voice pretending to be her dad <laughs> you know what i wanted to be but my dad would have let me i'm like what She's like, I wanted to be a stripper. And here's the thing. If this wasn't true, you'd have to think I have some balls to make up a story this seemingly racist. And I just start laughing. I'm like, two, I, think, I think she started telling me this for two reasons. She saw my tattoos, which means I'm not like, you know, so uptight. And she asked, she only told me this after she asked what I did for a living. And I was like, oh, I do YouTube. So she's like, okay, I can be comfortable. <laughs> And so she starts telling me how it didn't work out. She's like, yeah, I ended up uh, maybe I asked her if I could tell you guys this, by the way, she said, totally fine. Uh, she's like, oh, well, uh, you know, I, I was originally going to be a stripper. It was something I wanted to do. But then my mom got cancer and I had to watch her go. And that made me want to save people's lives. She's like, I couldn't save my mom, but maybe I can save someone else's. Right. <laughs> really noble to go from that to stripper. And then she goes. Do you want to know what my stripper name would have been? And I'm just sitting here like, what is happening? I can't even leave if I wanted to. I'm being, she's technically monitoring me as a professional right now while telling me this. And she told me, and I had a hard time hearing it. So she wrote it down in my phone. Her name, if she was a stripper, was to be Candy Lickamlo. <laughs> And the second she said that, I'm like, this human being is going to forever be remembered on my stream. So let me spell this for you, though. It's K-A-N-D-I. Lickamlo. One word. Candy Lickamlo. <laughs> You're, are you sure? She, on God. She typed it into my phone in messages I had with my brother. I just pulled up the quickest notepad I could, which were messages with my brother. And she typed in Candy Lickamlo. Through her little blue gloves, she typed it in there, one little finger at a time. She said, there you go, honey. There you go, baby. Hit send. No, she did not hit send. Candy Lickamlo. You who made it, <clears throat> and you who work with people who pretend it isn't real. This is for you. Thanks, Wubber Puppers, for being a place to laugh in a world that forgets how bad things can be. Amen to that, I also had an ex named Cundy Go Figure. Cundy? I don't know if her name was Cundy. Anyway, at one point she tells me while we're sitting there, she's like, your heart rate has gone down so much. I'm like, you made me comfortable, Miss Candy. I didn't, I never called her Candy. I called her nurse ha, and then ha, her candy. name. But here's the thing. I don't want Alex to get COVID. I don't want anybody else in San Diego that are my friends to get COVID. But if they do, God forbid, knock on wood, whatever, I will recommend them this place and I they will likely work with her and then they will see the truth. Nurse Lickamlo. <laughs> I can't believe it. I don't blame you. I'm the last one that hasn't gotten it somehow. The only proof I have is that immediately after I called Alex and I'm like, Alex, no one's going to believe me. 
no one is gonna believe me, but I just had the weirdest, most enlightening, amazing conversation with my nurse. <laughs> I'm like, why is she allowed to talk to me like this? But I kind of love it. Like, there's no way 65 year old white grandpa walks in and she's the same. There's no way. She's your guardian angel. It, I mean, low key though. Nurse lick them low. She also started telling, uh, she also started telling me about like, like how she, oh, like she, oh, she gave me like dating advice. Can I give you guys the dating advice she gave to me? You want to hear it? She just got out of a divorce. I, di I didn't ask her if she's no. seeing anybody now. You don't want the dating advice? She just got out of a divorce and I didn't have the heart to be like, oh, are you seeing anybody? But she was just sharing this with me. And you know what she said? She said, okay, this is, she had advice for dudes. Cause I mean, I was a dude. She's like, when you're with uh, not, if you're single, it's too late for you. You're dead. You're garbage. How long were you with her? I told you she had to monitor me for about an hour. So from start to end, it was about, it was about an hour. She gave me the injection and then 45 minutes sitting there. She's just taking my vitals, writing them down. I was a dude. <laughs> I said that? Hey, Keydex, thank you. I missed you too, plush. English majors represent. Yeah, your major annoying, dude. Major, shut up. How was the lap dance? That's so rude, dude. This woman saved lives in the Gulf War. All right, she's seen hell. She didn't deserve that, okay? Fuck you, ugly. Anyway, here's the advice she said to, to, to men in relationships. She said, uh, you need to make your girl feel special once a week she's like we're us ladies we're we're stupid loyal she's like i i was stupid loyal to this guy <clears throat> she's like all it takes she's like we don't give a fuck about anything else she's like we don't give a fuck about not a single thing in the world. and this might not be true for all women this is her advice as a 59 year old sassy amazing hero nurse okay take it with a grain of salt lick them miss lick them low she said um just do she's like even if it's just like put flowers up once a week that's it she's like cook a meal once a week it's all it takes she's like my man got way too comfortable and then i i saw the writing on the wall and i was like damn this is so sad she deserves better can he lick him low <laughs> who the fuck gonna make me feel special though well i'm sure I, hey listen if her husband or her ex-husband was in the room he'd probably give me some advice too don't date a crazy war nurse stripper bitch, right? Everyone, there's two sides to every pancake, okay? I'm just saying. Lick them loyal. They call her lick them loyal. Bro, just because she a stripper doesn't mean she's not loyal. If anything, she knows how to shake some ass and come home and be in love with her mans, you know? So Belle Delphine has something on her site right now. You guys know Belle Delphine, right? She sold her water or her spit or something. She's like, uh, she fucked a person on camera. Who? I got you. This is Belle Delphine. I died. Big surprise. <laughs> Dude, holy shit, that scared me. Did you see what? We just got transferred. Stop watching this, brother. We must defeat the Confederates. <laughs> So on her uh, on her site, you suck. Shut up, bitch. <clears throat> she is currently selling one night with her for a hundred thousand dollars. Let's look at what she's offering. Okay. So one night with Belle Delphine. Spend a night with me, and I'll make your fantasies come true. If you want to stay anonymous and keep this experience confidential, you can make the payment using Monero. Deposit a hundred k. Is it fake? Could be. Only one way to find out, chat. You can record everything that happens between us on video as a souvenir. <clears throat> Activities you can enjoy during our time together. Cultured conversation. Deep throat. Domination. Mild. Domination severe. I'll fucking kill you, Bill. I'm purchasing this to commit murder. <clears throat> face sitting fantasy outfits on request girlfriend experience lunch dinner date 
I don't think this is real. <laughs> Massage. Central. Oral. Give. Oral. Receive. Porn star experience. I want to know what that means. Is none of, so so clearly none of this is porn star experience. So what does this mean? She's like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll cry and fuck you because I need money. Prostate massage. All right, let me check out. Rimming. Let me check out. Role playing. Strip tease submission toy show. And and water sports. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lick your asshole, okay? And I'm gonna I'm gonna rub the shit out of your prostate. And when we're done, let's fucking go wakeboarding. We're gonna go take the old uh, jet ski out on the lake. Right after I tongue punch your asshole, play some water polo. Right after you slam this pussy to the moon, yeah. <laughs> Bring your jet skis. You're gonna come. Uh, she meant pissing. Oh. <laughs> That's fucking gross, dude. I'd rather jet ski with Bill. Thank you very much. Water sports. That's so... Come on, dude. What the fuck? Ew, what? Ew. If that's called water sports, do you think poop play is called earthbending? Like, I'm just trying to figure it out, right? Bill, I'm helping you out. Um, Uh-oh, we got a little legalese here at the bottom, eh? I got to be very careful scrolling right now because it becomes a minefield. Um, <clears throat> legal disclaimer. I'm a professional service provider. Any fees or compensation paid to me are for my time and companionship only. This kind of makes me feel like it's real. Any actions that take place <laughs> within our contracted time frame are a matter of mutual choice between consenting adults. She's saying you're paying for my time and if I suck your dick, it's not because you pay me. Any scenarios, fantasy, or otherwise contained in this ad are purely that. They do not constitute any form of contractual obligation. You know what's funny? Legally speaking, she has to say that. Otherwise, she's just, like, prostituting, right? But here's the thing. That also makes it so you can show up and she's like, hey, uh, I'm not fucking you. Sit down. We're watching season four of Stranger Things. And it's like, man. But you said, nope. Did you read the disclaimer? I didn't say shit. Shut up. Okay. If you're lucky, we'll go jet skiing, or I'll pee on you. Um, it's called chocolatiering. Don't make it sound cute. And you know what? I'll be the first to say, Earthbending is a way cooler name. It makes it sound like you're doing something like badass and not, you know, playing with shit like a toddler, okay? Listen, I'm not one to kink shame, but don't playing with poo is stupid, all right? Quit playing with poo. What are you, nine? Anyway... I do not engage in any unlawful acts. I reserve the right to not enter into any arrangement with those who I reasonably believe are under the influence of drugs or alcohol. You think you're going to show up to this not on coke? What? Come on, Bell. Who are we fucking, who are we, who are we playing around with? Wait, a lot of people had a problem with me saying, what are you, nine? You play with poop? When did you guys stop playing with poop? Why nine specifically? You know, you guys get a lot of sticking points here. You know that? 25. <laughs> Haven't stopped. A lot of people putting goose eggs in chat. I don't know why. <laughs> when did you start? I don't know, birth? I ate poop in the womb. That's why I have asthma. <sighs> Too much coke, your dick won't work? Bro, just start mainlining it. You got permanent, permanent hard dick. What's this stream? What's happening here? Anyway, um... <clears throat> All right, let's buy it. So, okay, but for real, though, I do think that, um... I do think... Th Can you return it? <laughs> I do think that purchasing this would be fucking amazing. Now, now, not... And I mean, I want to make this very clear. No sex. I, I have no desire to fuck Belle Delphine. That is in no way what I'm looking to do at all. Right? But how fucking amazing would it be if I showed up and made a full video out of it? That's a lie. What do you mean that's a lie? What do you mean? I see. see. You don't know what it's like to have content brain, bro. Imagine showing up with like the crew and we just film like the most awkward video ever. Sex isn't on the list. Wait a minute. Sex isn't on the list. Sex isn't even on the list. What the fuck? I just realized that. That's how I, that's another reason why, wait, PSE? What's PSE? 
PSC is sex. Man, some of you are degenerate. Hold on, let me look this up. What is porn star experience? A PSC? This is a real thing. What the? F this is a, a the PSC is a real thing. The porn star experience or PSC is a service offered by sex workers in brothels or by escorts in which they'll perform sex acts seen in porn movies. The porn star experience usually means sexually extreme acts are on the menu. What? Uh, oh, damn. Hi, I'd like missionary a la carte, please. I don't know about you, but some of those heading towards the extreme end would have me eating in different restaurants. Uh, this is a fun... They made the restaurant joke I made. That's funny. I'm admittedly a little old-fashioned, but I prefer my paid-for sex with a touch of feigned intimacy as a minimum. You want her fucking looking you in the eyes telling you she loves you? That's someone's daughter. You think I give a shit that she was pushed that put? Anyway, I do think that... Why did she got him wearing like a gorilla costume? Um, I do think, though, that this would be like the greatest stream collab ever. All right, I got to show you guys this video. So... On the subreddit, I had to stop it, but on the subreddit, you guys gotta you gotta you gotta let me land on this one. This one's great. Uh on the sub, somebody posted a link to a YouTube channel called uh Let's Read. It's a channel with nine hundred thousand subscribers, and he reads scary stories that are submitted. And somebody posted on the subreddit. Uh, from this video that he just uploaded, that one of the scary stories he swears is about Wubby. This scary story has to be about Wubby. So I started listening to it and I had to stop it because I'm like, okay, I want to see what Chad has to say. So we're going to watch it right now. Here it is. Keep in mind. This is supposed to be a real scary story, like a, a story that's intentionally trying to spook you, like a copy pasta bullshit, right? I am a mail carrier here in California. A big part of my job is delivering Amazon packages, and as you can imagine, my workload has increased significantly during the pandemic. I didn't listen to the whole as thing. As per usual, this has increased the number of strange encounters I've had. I have a few to share, but I'll start with one. My current route for the past six months leads me through multiple subdivisions of large, beautiful homes, like swimming pools with hot tubs in every yard. Given the pandemic, I've noticed people, mainly older folks, have really taken to coming outside to talk to me across their yards. I don't mind at all, but try to keep it short so I don't fall behind on deliveries. One of my favorite residents is an older lady who I'll call Mrs. Lithgow for the sake of the story. She must be well into her 70s and loves to chat about everything going on in the neighborhood. Okay, okay. It's not unusual for her to report back that so-and-so has left their lawn unattended for two months or that they have strange visitors at odd hours. I usually just nod and smile. The house across the street from Mrs. Lithgow was only listed for sale for a few days when it was purchased really quickly. Shortly thereafter, my truck began to fill up with Amazon packages for whoever lived there. Mrs. Lithgow noticed... So at this point, I'm like, I, this is a stretch. Right away and told me a week later that packages would stay in their pile until nighttime and then have disappeared in the morning. This didn't seem strange to me at the time. Mrs. Lithgow became further concerned and began telling me that there always seems to be a lot of screaming coming from the house later in the evening. I hadn't heard anything, but my deliveries were always earlier in the morning. My first strange encounter was dropping off a stack of packages. I loaded my arms way higher than I'm supposed to, in a rush, and was waddling up the path. I felt my foot hit something hard and thought I felt it break. I set the stack down and to my horror, realized I had kicked a bag of garbage that had fallen open. Sticking out of the top was a jar with what looked like animal body parts in it. They had leaked onto the hot stone path and as soon as I had stopped, the smell was unbearable. I also noticed that there was a creepy doll in the bag. Okay, I still saw this part, but at this point, I'm like, okay, this is a bit of a stretch to think this story was a shit post about me. 
Just wait. I'll tell you when I stopped it. I quickly finished my delivery and got out of there. I thought about calling the police, but honestly, I thought maybe it was a fetal pig or something like that, so I talked myself out of it. You suck. Mrs. Lithgow approached me a few weeks later, telling me that she had finally met the homeowner. After the whole bottle incident, I was pretty interested to know who lived there. Mrs. Lithgow said it was a petite pink-haired woman who said she was living there with her autistic charge. So, okay, do you see what I'm saying? I stopped it right here. And I was like, there is no, dude, this is just a whoopee shit post that somebody passed off as a, as a story. I can't believe it, dude. Okay, I have not seen anything past this point, but I was like, there's no way, bro. There's no way. That's true. <laughs> it has to be about me, right? Mrs. Lithgow thought it was so strange, and I couldn't help but agree that this young woman lived there alone with this other person, but no one was ever seen coming or going. I chalked it up to the pandemic and went on with my day. Like this. Mrs. Lithgow, however, did not. The next day, she came racing to the side of the road. I had to remind her to stay six feet away, but she was shouting that there had been an incident. Apparently, the woman living in the house and the man she cared for had been spotted outside in the backyard. Kids were playing a few houses down and came running in yelling that the autistic man had threatened to shoot them with arrows after yelling. No! Do you dude, this is totally it! Oh my god, dude, this is so ridiculous, bro. That's the archery stream, dude. Oh, and Lithgow? Dude, Lithgow is the name of the actor who plays Farquaad. Bro, this dude got baited so hard. You know who I am. I'll admit, I wanted Wait, to know I said, more. Do you know hold on, hold on, Ellie, hold on. Do you know who I am? <laughs> I'll admit, I wanted to know more, but didn't have the time to ask questions. Another time, she told me that pink smoke had billowed out of the house and two people came running out, screaming. <laughs> after that, I didn't see Mrs. Lithgow after she had left town to visit one of her kids. The house stayed quiet and I continued so to leave good. stacks and stacks of packages there. I began to notice that the names on the packages were often different, lots of times just being Fat Goblin and other weird things. Okay, dude, this is... How is this not obviously a shitpost to these people? I once ran into two electricians leaving the house. As I passed by them, one of them said, That house is full of cat feces. Full. What? When my route was slightly <laughs> altered, so their address was later in the day, I also started hearing the yelling that I think Mrs. Lithgow had been referring to. This fucking it poor guy read man, this whole thing. And he was constantly yelling almost incoherent things like, Black, me calls crying. <laughs> At first, I thought... Me calls crying! Me calls crying! <laughs> Is that Miko? Is that like Miko's calling crying? <laughs> I thought he might have been yelling at me, but several times I noticed he was yelling before I even approached the house. I thought maybe it was linked to his diagnosis. Honestly, none of these occurrences were that weird to me, given some of the other experiences I've had. A few weeks ago, I had to deliver a package that required a signature. I had never actually seen anyone there myself, but I knocked anyways. I heard a small shriek and shuffling about. Concerned, I walked toward the side of the house, but still in front, and yelled, Hello, I need a signature for a package. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You left the fucking tag and you ran away from my property as quickly as possible because you refused to fucking deliver anything. You annoying piece of shit. I've been dealing with this for years. In oh, front and yelled, Hello, I need a signature for a package. Oh my God, if it's you're not safe here, I'm done. The shuffling continued. I went back to the front door to knock one last time and leave a note letting them know where they could pick it up. I suddenly heard loud and fast stomping from inside the house. I peeked into the glass of the door to see if someone was coming. It was a stocky man dressed in a spandex suit from head to toe. He waved a gun in the air. I stepped back in shock. I froze just for a second long enough to hear him yell, You're not safe here! <laughs> Shit. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's so dude. There was there's not even a question in my mind, right? This is so obvious. 
that was enough to get me moving again. I turned and began to run. As I raced down the driveway and back into my truck, I could now fully see the man holding his weapon, yelling, I shoot the maim! <laughs> and I just took off. I called my supervisor immediately, but was told there is nothing we can do about it because technically I was on his property and he never directly threatened me. Dude, come on. I still think on. I should have called the police. I began leaving the packages at the end of the driveway and <laughs> have not heard or seen anyone in that house again. <laughs> is that it? Wow. Okay, that's it. Bro, that is so fucking funny. Oh my god. This dude had no clue. He recorded this whole thing with his cute little music. <laughs> Why was there any doubt? The, the person who posted this um, said, I swear this scary story is about Wubby. Bro, what do you mean? It was, it was so obviously me. <clears throat> wow, that's so fucking funny. I wonder if anybody listened to that fucking story. That's kind of my favorite thing, right? Iconic if, piece of literature. If somebody... Who submitted that? The comments? I really want to know... Um, oh, I'll check the comments right now. Let's see. I'm, I'm scrolling. Okay, so... We were, I checked the top comments before stream. Nobody said anything about it. Nobody said a single fucking thing about it, which kills me. Now all the comments, uh, when you sort by new, are like Wubby7 and bullshit, but nobody knew though. Nobody, I think people listen to that shit thinking it was scary. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking funny to me. Thousand years into the future, you're going to be some kind of demon. Game. I know, dude. They're gonna, they, they're, they're, look what they're doing to my memory, bro. They're tarnishing my, my legacy. <gasps> Can I rant to you guys right now with a story that's not particularly funny? It's not particularly interesting. Can I bore you guys? Can you give me five minutes to rant? I just need to get it off my chest, please. I, I just need to, and this is a rich person problem, and I recognize that, okay? But I also recognize that just because you have money doesn't mean you can't bitch, but, you know, I, ho I hold back a lot of, I know when to complain, right? I'm not gonna go to my, uh, my dad who works six days a week and complain that the repair on my BMW was expensive. I'm not gonna do that. You guys are already calling me an asshole. I know where to complain, right? Why are you guys being me? Yo, Stushi, you ever come into Chicago? Hey, dipshit, because you just called me Stushi, I am never gonna set foot in Chicago ever. I would rather die than go to Chicago at this point. In fact, my last words as I die are gonna be, fuck Chicago. Chicago can suck my dick, okay? So there's the answer to your question, Stushy, bitch. Anyway, sorry, Booty. Booty's in shambles. Booty loves Chicago. As I was saying, let me complain to you for a moment. Let me show you why. You know, Notorious Big once said, I've been shot. No, Notorious Big once said, more money, more problems. Okay? And let me explain why that's true. I have a pool. I have an expensive pool. Not by choice. I mean, well, I didn't build it. It was a part of the house. Okay? I uh, love the pool. Love it. Uh, and it has a nice little spa section, and it's an infinity pool. It, it, it pours off, right? Which uh, is cool, but as I've learned through owning this home, is extremely expensive to maintain, and uh, uh, if something goes wrong, you're, you're fucked, right? So a couple weeks prior to uh, Australia, I'd say... Two weeks before flying to Australia, my pool guy knocks on my door and says, Hey, Dennis, I got some bad news, and it's kind of urgent. Your pool is leaking water, and it's leaking water fast. I did some looking around. Don't know where it's leaking. I'm concerned because potential landslide. It could be internally damaging, you know, under the pool, around the pool, everywhere. He's like, this is bad. Uh, who is Dennis? He, my father was there. No. So I'm like, oh shit. Okay. What, what do I do? I don't know what to do. How do I solve the problem? I'll pay for it. I just don't want this to be a bigger problem. He's like, okay. Uh, I'm shutting off the system. You need to get leak detection out here. ASAP for them to look at it. Okay. Not a problem. I'll do that. Call leak detection. Right. And they're like, okay, we can send somebody out in two weeks. 
the day before I fly out to Australia, they can send somebody out here. I'm like, is that the soonest you can do? And they're like, yeah, that's the soonest we can do. There's only like three or four of us in San Diego you can call around. But either way, your best bet is going with us because we're the biggest. I'm like, okay, fine, deal. Let's make it happen. So, cut to the day before I fly out for Australia. Come on, I'm about to be out of my home for 14, 15 days or 12, whatever. Oh, no, my privilege is making my life hard. Uh, hey, dude, just plug your ears for the rest of the story because you're going to feel really poor. Anyway, so the leak detection people show up and they go, hey, man, uh, we're not going to enter your pool to detect the leak for two reasons. Reason number one, uh, your pool has turned green or it's not clean enough for my tech to feel comfortable going in the pool. And then I operate on the outside of the pool uh, while my tech's on the inside. And I don't want to go near the pool because there's some bees around it. And I'm like, uh, okay. Hmm. So I say, hey, dude, I'll thank the subs in a second. I see him coming in. Let me land the story, okay? So I said, okay, uh, dude, we have to turn off the pool because when I run the pool, the pool is draining at an alarming rate. So we shut it off, and then it turned green because you guys took two weeks to get here. And he goes, yeah, man, nothing I can do about that. You'll just have to run the pool at a loss. Uh, you have to lose the water, unfortunately, during that time and just hope for the best. And also, you need to take care of the bees. And I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm getting, I'm like, dude, I go to Australia tomorrow. What do I do? And he's like, we'll schedule when we come back. You'll just have to deal with it, get back. I'm like, okay. So there's nothing I can do. The pool is just going to become a nuclear pond sludge shithole. It is what it is. I go to Australia. I come back. I tell my pool guy the situation. Hey, I'm between a rock and a hard place here, man. We got to maintain this pool at a huge loss until these idiots can come out. Okay. I managed to call the pool company. Or I'm sorry, the, the leak detection company. We agree on a date. I talk to my pool guy. He says, okay, I can get the pool up and running a few days before then so we're not wasting all this water. Everything seems to be working out. Except for the bees. Just wait. The story, it, it, I'm telling you, it's not particularly funny. I just need to vent to somebody about this. And you're going to, I'm going to vent. All right. These fucking bees. I swear to God. I usually, I like a moth came in my house yesterday and we we're trying to get rid of it. And I was begging everyone to not kill it because I don't want you to, I don't, my dad, that's what my dad taught me. Right. So they're trying, anyway. I don't like killing anything typically, but I would I would burn these fuckers alive on a broadcast, dude. I don't give a fuck. Fuck these stupid bees. So, these bees like to drink from my pool. I had a beekeeper out uh, months ago to do with these bees, just months ago. And he's like, yeah, they're just thirsty. The hive's not on your property. There's nothing we can do. Uh, you can spray them with uh, vinegar water. If they don't leave, they're just thirsty. There's nothing you can do. So I'm like, all right, <clears throat> I need to deal with them my way. I spray them with vinegar every single day until the leak detection company comes back. My pool guy is uh, spending thousands of dollars in my water bill to keep the pool going. We're losing so much water every day, but we're offsetting it by me filling the pool every day. I'm sp it, it cut my water bill this month was thousands, just so you know. Uh, and we're doing that so the pool is clean enough, and I'm spraying three times a day to get the bees away. Okay, so cut to a couple days ago. I'd say three, four days ago, uh, the leak detection company, they don't show up. They give me a call. They're like, hey, we're supposed to come out tomorrow, uh, but I'm not going to say the dude's name because you guys would nuke this business if I told you who it was. So we're going to call him Bob. All right. So I, I'm talking to the, the uh, receptionist and she's like, yeah, Bob's not going to come out unless you guarantee there's no bees there. And I'm like, is Bob allergic? I'm like, listen, I'm not particularly a brave man. And I've been next to these bees for the past 10 days. I'm like, there's maybe 12 bees drinking. I, what do, I'm like, I'm sorry, but is, I'm like, listen, if, if Bob's scared, maybe can we get somebody else out here? Is he allergic? She goes, he's not allergic. He just doesn't want to be near bees while he's working. And I'm like, lady, you need to understand here. I'm losing thousands of dollars the entire time this is going on and there's nothing I can do and you're telling me there's nothing I can do she's like well did you try getting rid of the bees I'm like listen here you bitch I spoke with two beekeepers in San Diego and they said there's nothing we can do so I tell her this and she goes well there's nothing I can do and I'm like okay 
is your uh, uh, is is I almost said his real name. Is Bob gonna come anyway? Uh, there's no bees. I just lied. I'm like, there's no bees. It's fine. Just tell him to show up. She's like, okay, yeah, he'll show up. Next day comes by, never shows up. Nobody calls. Nobody shows up. Nothing ever happens. That's my last correspondence I had with the leak detection company. I talked to my pool guy, and he goes, hey man, I'm gonna be honest with you. Just let the pool completely drain. And just deal with this later. Like, you're, you're getting fucked here. You're losing so much water. This water's going somewhere. This is fucked. Like, you're, you're fucked, dude. I'm like, okay, cool. I just don't have a pool. Fine, we'll deal with it later. I call a new leaking company. And I have to tell you, this is where, I swear to God, Jesus Christ came and saved everything. All right? This is the happy ending that everyone's been waiting for. I call a new leak detection company. And they're really casual. Like, scary casual i'm like hey here's my situation is that going to be an issue and the dude's like why would i care about beasts and i'm not doing a voice this is what he sounds like the best way i can describe it is he looks and sounds like rob schneider in 50 first dates let me put up a photo for you okay rob schneider 50 first dates he goes why would i care about beasts Oh, Alex is going to laugh because she spoke with him today, too. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I have to pull this photo up for you guys. All right. This is now who I, I am talking to. I don't real. I'll take these subs in a second. Thank you. This is now who I'm working with. All right. I don't know this is what he looks like until today. But I've been I've corresponding. He's like, I, I, you know, I can get out there in like uh, three, four days. I'm like, okay, great, great. Cool, thank you so much. Let's make this happy. He goes, by the way, it's gonna be you know very expensive. You have a very complicated system. I'll take a look. I'm like, great. So today, dude shows up, I meet with him, and he's like, Oh, you got a really nice pool, but you know, you're in some deep shit. <laughs> I don't want to keep it. I want you to know this. Okay? He goes, Not once does this man acknowledge the bees, care about the bees, talk the bees are there sitting there, probably. 10, 15 of them on one corner of my pool, just drinking. Doesn't even fucking t It's like this dude probably flew here on the back of bees. He doesn't give a shit. It's like business as usual, right? And he's like, okay, I'm going to go check around. You'll see what happens. 15 minutes go by. Keep in mind, I want everyone to remember everything I've told you this far. A month of dealing with shit, thousands of dollars, terrified that this shit is damaging the inside of, you know, under the pool and my pool's fucked. The other company I was going to work with was sending a diver. The diver was scared to go in the water. The dude was scared of bees. All of this culminates in this guy showing up. 15 minutes later, knocks on my window. Hey, Dennis. Yes, yeah, so it's leaking over there, and I capped it off. You're good. Oh, Alex is telling me to pick up. Uh-oh. 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 Why is Alex telling me to pick up? Hello? Hi. What? I just wanted to add something to the story that was really oh, funny. Oh, please. He didn't just say I'm going to cap it off. He goes, he's like, what I did is I sat by the pool and I listened. Oh, and yeah. I listened. And then I hold, hold on. Say it again. You got attenuated. <laughs> he said, I just sat and I listened. And I listened. And then I heard the water running like water fountain. <laughs> and then it was over there and I capped it off. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so um, it was apparently it was leaking. There was a there was a pipe. I don't know how the pipe system works, but there was a pipe that went from our pool and one of it, it splits. And that pipe is supposed to be capped off and it was leaking out. It was just spewing out into this like, I don't even know, like backyard. Nobody had noticed it either. Um, the pool whispers, yeah, he stood there and went, I listen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and best part of this is he was going to charge me a thousand dollars for coming out there, but because he didn't have to do most of the work, he didn't charge me that. He gave me a discount because of it. My fucking man. Oh, Alex, you're still on the call. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. okay bye -bye. Do you have anything you want to add? No. Do, do you not agree? Do you, do you not agree that he kind of looked like this too? I, I do agree. He was a little darker like than a, this, like but he had cleaned up same, version. Yeah, cleaned up. He had a he had cleaned a mustache, version. same mustache, but like yeah. nice clean hair, clean yeah. shaven, except for the mustache. Looked exactly like this though. I just also, thought it was so funny. What, my first what is Rob like, Schneider? Like, my is he first Mexican? conversation with him was pretty much just like, 
yes, I just listened. And he's like, <laughs> going on about it. He's like, yeah, you can just hear it. It's like a water fountain. He's like, I don't know why nobody noticed. Ah. I'm like, well, okay. Lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, okay, bye. Thank you. So the dude, the dude, my my new this guy, the leak guy who came out, didn't even need a diver, didn't need anything. Uh, he was super apologetic because he's like, yeah, I know your story, and like, this sucks. Like you're out thousands. Like that's shit. And I told him, I'm like, my brother in Christ, I may be out thousands, but you don't understand. I was expecting to get news today that I was about to be out tens of thousands. So I was like, I was so thankful. I'm like, it's over. It's fi it's finally over. Like, oh my God. So here is my Wubby has our all bookmarked twice. The re my bookmarks are accidentally dragging new tabs out of a browser and then I accidentally drop them there. So whatever. Anyway, um, did I tip him? I did not tip him. But here is my advice. So first off, yes, this is a rich people problem that most of you will probably never experience because it's not something most people deal with. I have a very complicated pool system, but I'm not flexing. This is actually... A warning, pools are like boats, okay? They are money holes. And I'm just warning you, I, I'm i very lucky that my boys in chat, okay, the people who watch me, who like the content, support me in a way where I have a multi-thousand dollar water bill, I can take care of it, right? But can you, there are, I just cannot even imagine, it, I was in such a bad situation through none of my doing, and I can imagine people right now are getting dicked. And it's like, well, you have money anyway. Yeah, some people have money, but they can't afford a multi-thousand dollar pool problem. Oh, anyway, that's my story. I'm very thankful. I thought I'd share with you guys. I just needed a rant. It just happened. It just got resolved. And I just needed to tell somebody. So thank you guys for listening, okay? Uh, boat stands for break out another thousand. I believe it, bro. The best two, the best two days of boat owners' lives are the day they buy the boat, the day they sell it. I would never buy a boat. All right, uh, real quick. I promised you guys. So Ash, Ash is a used to live to here. TwitchCon, thirty-five months frosted fairies. I don't want you to have a bigger wiener than me. If you have a bigger wiener than me, I don't want to see it. I need to pretend like you don't exist. Okay, it's for me. Um, so Friday I canceled stream, and it was last minute, and that was my fault. If you read the comments, I was fully transparent. I forgot. My bad. I should have canceled earlier. I should have canceled a week before. I knew it was happening, and I forgot. Uh, it was Ash's birthday. Ash used to live here. If you're fans of the stream, there's a video of me putting beans in her hand, forcing her to do weird shit when she lived here. And she turned 21. So I was like, I can't miss that. We're all going to go out drinking and have fun. And someone on the subreddit was like, understandable. I threw her wand. Yes, I've abused her in many ways. But it worked, right? She now has this weird fear respect thing with me. Um, so I would recommend that any young, anyone right now hanging out with young, impressionable people, just abuse them, uh, and they'll, they'll cling to you. Uh, anyway, <laughs> she's loyal to a fault. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. That's so fucked up. We were great to Ash. Okay. We were awesome to her groomed. I didn't groom her. All right. That you're taking it to a weird place. S someone on the subreddit was like, okay, you can go out as if they have control. But they're like, you can go out, but you have to take photos and show us. I'm like, deal. So all night I was that annoying person. Can't show you most of the videos because you're taking a video when you're drunk and then you watch it when you're sober and you're like, ooh, <laughs> who is ugh? I, I hope I wasn't that loud. Like I, maybe because the mic was close to me, I think. But we got, I got a couple photos with some stories that I'll share with you now before we get into the unboxing. Some of these Alex took. Uh, and yeah, so here we go. All right, first one. Let yourself land. Thank you. First up, this is just a sweet photo, but it has a great part one, part two. So here's the first photo. The ladies, lovely ladies. I'm in the back there. So is Booty and DJ. Adri's there. That's not my hand. That's Peanut's hand, okay? You should know there's no tattoos on it. Also, it looks like a small woman's hand. Very soft. He has very soft hands. The reason why I'm showing you this photo is because the best part, photo two, is Ash dropping the phone. I just, Alex sent me these today. I thought it was a great, good old one, two. One, and here she is dropping it. Uh, this next one, we were at a bar, and uh, if you know my dad, you'll love this one, okay? We got a little, a little cameo from my father. Here I am. God, I look so cute. I want you to note that this statue was actually six foot eight from the top of her head. I believe with the hat, it goes up to about seven foot. But more importantly... 
It's everywhere, dude. Life imitates art. And you, of course I did that. I mean, this wasn't photographed. Maybe it was. Maybe Carlos has it. I did sniff the shit out of the tits. Okay. You getting Yeb trashed? Uh, no, but she may have. I didn't personally get her trashed. Why does she have Putin boots? You know what I like about this? You know what I like about this? I'm noticing nobody has commented that I look retarded. And I like that. I tried, okay? I tried to not look retarded. Thank you. Nice smile. Thank you. You're talking about me, right? <laughs> you look cute. Thank you. You look normal. Thank you. Keep them coming. Statue look kind of retarded, though. You got monkey pox from motorboating your tits. No, I got this, I got monkey pox from another interaction that I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so there's that cute little photo. Uh, up next, here we got to show Ash the lovely parts of downtown San Diego. This one's zoomed He's in. Got tits. Thank you. This one's zoomed in, but we'll zoom out in a second here. So here we have a dude laying in the street near a homeless guy. This guy wasn't homeless. The police were just arriving. Shoes just everywhere not a single shoe on a foot in sight my man's was out like out and then the cop showed up and he sh stood up real quick i'm fine i'm fine and the best part is i go oh my god ash it's your first time out with us you have to pose with him so i had ash pose up uh and she was all about it she was so excited for it i'm like this is it this is what going out is all about so he took a couple quick ones and the cops were like, okay, keep going. I thought it was fun. <laughs> wow. Right? Good times. All right. Um, and then I got a couple videos for you guys. Cause you know, why not? I'll show you some videos. I only have two that I'm willing to share. Cause the rest are kind of messy. All right. Here's me. Um, <laughs> this is a video of me ruining Ash's first ever shot at a bar this is well wait i shouldn't say that no right this is ash's first drink at a bar after she turned 21 we got her a nice fun group fruity shot i'm joking and i filmed it and apparently i was supposed to do the toast we'll just watch <clears throat> It's like, it's just so bad. <laughs> Alex is like, weren't you supposed to toast? What you don't see in this video is prior to the shots getting handed out, I go, hey, wait, we got to make a toast. It's our first drink. And then like, okay, you say it. I'm like, okay, I'll say it. And then immediately after that, I hit film. Ash is 21. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, and then I guess I, I, I don't, I can't be real. This is not edited in any way. This is uh, uh, me hitting front facing camera. Oh shit, stopping record. <laughs> it's not a Rolex, thank you. It's not a Rolex. It, it's an Omega watch that Alex got me. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and then here's the last video I'm gonna show you guys. But then I have a story. This video is a company with a small story, and then I have a big story. You like my NASA hat? Can I tell you guys something about that NASA hat? Okay. You want to know why that NASA hat matters a lot to me? I'm just... It, this is a lie. I'm joking. I'm playing a character on stream. Uh, did I tell you guys? Oh, did I tell you? I stole it. I stole it accidentally. Uh, I, co I committed an, uh, an international crime uh, accidentally. I stole it in Australia. Uh, so in Australia, we were going shopping because I didn't have a lot of good clothes for winter. So we, we had like a full shop. We just blocked out some time to go to a mall in Australia, in Sydney. And uh, while we were there, I was trying all this stuff. I bought a sh I probably bought like a couple hundred dollars worth of clothes. Nothing expensive. Just I needed a whole winter wardrobe for the trip. And while we were shopping, keep in mind, a couple hours of shopping, I found this NASA hat and I liked it. So I put it on. I was just trying, kept trying shit on. I go to check out. I'm checking out. Everything's great. 
have this big bag, walk out, walking down the street with Booty, try to meet up with Alex. We eventually find Alex. We're walking, and I go, oh, shit, Booty, I never, <laughs> I never took off the hat. I think I stole the hat. And then we're like, do we go back? And I'm like, I feel like if we go back, I'll be in more trouble. <laughs> in GTA. This is all in GTA. So I just, uh, you know. And now, and now the hat, you know, means a lot to me. You should have gone back. You know what, dude? Listen. Add it to the list. I torture cats. I steal hats. It rhymes. It works. It you makes suck. sense. All right. Hashtag go back. Dude. International news. Pay money wubby. B-list streamer has stolen a hat in hashtag go back. Bro, I'm going to get a $3,000 flight back. We're going to go. I'm going to say, hey, I stole this hat three months ago. And they're going to say, P just leave. Please, could you leave? You have, we have to go back to the, I you're saying D-list? Okay, I thought I was being generous by saying B. And you guys are like, okay, you're C at best. B wh why is B-list? Bro, who's, you know what? Let me ask yourself this, okay? I'm the D-list streamer, okay? Right? You're watching the D-list streamer. That makes, what does that make you? That's like a F-list viewer, all right? You know how much better content there is than D? We pity you. Everyone's watching just on the verge of tears, hoping I make it through the stream. When I hit, uh, when I hit the go offline button, everyone's like, <sighs> okay, he's not, he didn't kill himself. <laughs> oh God, he's figuring it out. Is this my Truman Show moment? Is this where Booty knocks on the door and he's like, yeah, we've been worried. All right. Uh, this is the end of the night. We went to, I'm just going to say, we went to a, mm, okay. Hmm. I don't care. I'm going to say it because I don't have anything bad to say about it. We went to, I would, I don't, there may be a more polite way to do it. I don't know how to word it. We went to a black bar and, and let me quantify what that means before you say, why would you say it's a black bar? Let me explain. When I, what I mean by it was a black bar is that when we walked in, me and my group of 10 total people, we looked like a mayonnaise stain in the bar. As in, the only people in that bar that weren't black were us and our group. And, and I'm not exaggerating even slightly. And it was a lot of fun. It was the last bar we went to for the night. Everyone's putting question marks. It's so funny. But uh, we were the only white people in the entire bar. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, and it was the way we ended. It was a hookah bar and they were doing like after hour stuff. They weren't closed. Uh, and Ash got hit in a fight, but we won't talk about that. Anyway, on the way out, we all got kicked out cause a fight broke out and they were like, everybody out. So we all are leaving. And this is us last bar of the night. I think it's like close to 4am at this point. Everyone's drunk. I'm very drunk. I'm also feeling good on hookah and shit. That happened later. Ash, just let me tell the fake story. Ash was bleeding. She got rushed to the ER. She lost 20% of her body weight and blood. It was a whole thing. So this is leaving, and I just started filming. I don't know why I started filming, but I'm going to let you see. Booty. There he goes. There he goes. Caught in the act. What, 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 what is the point? What is the point? Just putting you down. What is his goal? <laughs> you can hear all the, the ladies are like, Booty, like, please. Booty, please. What are you doing? And then, while I'm watching this, someone next to me starts talking to me, and I, I flip I, the he camera hates on. Him. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. He just hates him. Ava Angelo. Ava Angelo? Ava Angelo. Ava, is that a first name and a last name? My rapper name, yeah, I'm a rapper. You rap? I rap. Where, do you, where can we find you? You know what? I'm, I'm released, but I just got a bunch of money, so I'm about to release my shit. Shit! Where'd you get the money from, girl? No, no worries. <laughs> so hold on, hold on. That's where it cuts off. But while we were waiting for our Uber, we had this very long conversation where this lady turned out to be a lovely worker of the night, if you will. Uh, and she has a six-year-old son and a rap career she's trying to start. She wouldn't tell me where we could find her music, but we have Ava Angelo. I think she was on a lot, but she was great. I, we got to know her while we were waiting, but the whole Chad, I'm gonna tell you something that Chad 
has taught me and I've never been able to, it has actually helped so much with my social anxiety and, and I can't go back and I'm going to teach and, and it's in no way uh, that gives you the right to be mean or rude to anybody, but let me explain. And this is kind of what happens in this video. Chad, every time he would interact with people, he would come back up to me and he would go, just all NPCs, baby. Just, it's all NPCs. And since then, every time I interact with a weird, scary, homeless person, right? You just treat it like it's someone coming up to you, giving you a side quest. Or like, this is the dialogue option, right? And this isn't an excuse to be a piece of shit. That's not what I'm saying. And watch the video. I wasn't mean to her at all. But like, if you just kind of treat it like it doesn't matter, you find yourself getting along better with people. Right? It's just like, oh, instead of this girl started talking to me, and instead of being like, ugh, like you're a scary woman of the night, I'm just like, oh, hey, what's up? You rap? Like, it does, like, who cares? Like, what's gonna happen? Just keep going with it. You're not a real person. No, don't try to run with this. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, tr I'm, you're taking it too literally. You're like, okay, cool. So I should go on, I should just kill everyone in town then, right? Wubby told me that everyone is not real. No, I'm saying, Quit you, putting so much focus on saying the right thing puts you in a bad mindset, right? So if you're just like, it's, it's, all, it's all an NPC, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Just be comfortable. It can help. And it's helped me a lot. I'm just giving you advice that's helped me. Kill John Lennon. <laughs> okay, everybody. All right. All right. Anyway, it's legal immunity. So we had this filmed, this next thing. I can't show it to you for a few reasons. The first reason is I've been wrestling if it's like, Oh, morally okay to show you because we filmed somebody without their permission and I decided not to. But then even more so, uh, this this dude, our Uber driver who we filmed, had uh, uh, his speech going, that the navigation, and it basically just constantly was saying where we're going and I don't want people to use that. Um, but we had this Uber driver and it's all we have it all filmed because about five minutes into the Uber, I just started filming and then Booty without even communicating to me, also started filming. That should give you an idea of how unhinged this Uber was. The man was 75 years old. He was a war veteran, fighter pilot, who then flew commercially. And we just started talking and we were, again, just vibing. We were just talking all the way home. I was sitting up front with him. And I'm going back and forth with him. And COVID gets brought up and he talks about getting, you know, I didn't get the, you know, of course I didn't get the fucking jab, you know, I didn't. And we're like, I'm like this, see, this is where maybe if you handle things differently, you may be like, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore, but hello, NPC. I'm like, maybe I want to hear more. I want to go through all the dialogue trees with this guy. <laughs> you guys putting chills in chat is so funny. So he's like, but I don't want to offend you. And I'm like, dude, I don't, tell me your opinion. I'm like, we may not agree, but I want to hear everything you got to say. So let me share with you what, and again, we have it filmed, but I'm not going to release it. It's kind of fucked up. So don't worry, but this guy, he said, okay, he believe he, he is not taking any vaccines ever. He doesn't want any of the vaccines. He's like, I've been driving Uber. I have 50,000 uh, drives through the entire pandemic and I'm alive. And I'm like, oh, God, whatever. And then he goes, I'm like, okay, fair. So if they're not, it's then if it's not a real vaccine, what do you think the government is injecting people with? <laughs> I have never heard this, but this might actually trigger some retards in chat. So I can't wait to, to hear what you guys think of this. But he believes, first off, rarely, and I want you to, rarely does the term minorities come up in an Uber. If you hear the word minorities from your Uber driver, the conversation is going downhill. And I think the word minority was used like 12 times in that Uber. So just right at the gate, if we're out having a fun night drinking and you hear the word minority, guarantee there's a conversation going on that maybe shouldn't be done with drunk people. But regardless, he goes, he's talking about all this shit. And I'm, okay, what's the point of the, What's the point of the shot then, man, if, if it's not actually helping and saving lives? And he goes, okay, well, here's what I believe. I believe the government has captured aliens more advanced than us. And the aliens are now working with the human race this glo the entire global power okay, is working with the aliens because the aliens need to somehow find a way to splice their DNA with humans to keep their alien, the next alien generation. So he said, 
you guys all got the vax when you guys have kids in that vaccine <laughs> was the ability to splice alien dna with human dna so your kids your kids are going to be able to splice with these aliens for the next generation <laughs> and I, I remember my response being like okay i hear you but like doesn't it seem more likely that just like there was a bad virus <laughs> And he's like, F you know, fair enough, fair enough. And these are just my beliefs. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. And I had this, we, we, all, we got out of the car and we were all were just, you know, of course I turned to Buddha. I'm like, well, well, all right. We had this whole like, what the fuck was that guy on? And then we had this kind of cool sobering moment too, where I was like, uh, at least he'll be dead soon. I know that sounds kind of fucked up, but I was like, well, at the very least, we weren't talking to someone who was like 25, you know? And he, he was like, oh, I've never had COVID and I've never had the shot and I drive all these people around. And I'm like, dude, I'm worried for you. I'm in this car and I could kill you with, with whatever I have. Like, you should not be this casual. He could live another 30 years. No, no, you don't, you don't understand. I poisoned him during the trip. I, I pricked him a little bit with something. So no, I, I'm telling you, I'm confessing that I murdered this man. He could, you really think he could live another 30 years, bro? Anyway, I, it, his, I've never, I have heard COVID conspiracies. I've heard people this reason or that reason, and some are at least not totally unhinged. It was the most unhinged shit I've ever heard in my entire life. It was the best way to end the night. And I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. So there you go. That was my Friday night. That is why I couldn't stream. I appreciate you guys being understanding. I was able even to get my gym in. I went to the gym before we even went out to dinner. That's part of the reason I had to cancel stream. I had to go to the gym. We had to go to dinner. And then we had to go out drinking. And I wanted to do all three of those. And I didn't want to miss out on anything. Thank you guys for being cool about it. The subreddit was really cool. And no one got too publicly butthurt. But it was worth it.